It was terrific. I mean, I enjoyed Sammy's company. Uh, he enjoyed my company. We got together really when I, when I got him his first recording contract with Decca Records. And I went to his first session. And the, the, the song that was supposed to be the hit was a song from Kiss Me Kate called This Is My Beloved. And he was so nervous that they made 17 takes and his voice kept cracking. Finally, he got a take that was pretty good. The flip side was the throwaway song was a song called Hey There. And he records Hey There, and it sounds great. We didn't know that Rosie, Rosemary Clooney went back into the studio and recut her version of Hey There when she now does the recitation where she talks on the record, which became the big hit. But Sammy's was a big enough hit. So while I knew him from his days in the nightclub, we got close during this whole period with the recording. And uh, I still, you know, when he lost his eye, it was on a driving from Vegas to Los Angeles for a recording session. And I got the call from the head of Decca Records saying about the accident. And I always felt responsible, which was kind of silly. You know, because of me, he lost his eye, which was kind of crazy. But if he wasn't going back for a recording contract, which I had gotten for him, maybe it wouldn't have happened. In any event, uh, he was extreme, very exciting. I mean, he was especially exciting performer. Um, and it was a joy to watch him. And I watched him perform with his father and his uncle in the Will Maston Trio. And here's the kid, and the kid did all this stuff. To growing where he did it by himself. You know, the father and the uncle were standing on his side just keeping rhythm, or not there at all. As, as it turned out. And he was an incredible performer. Incredible performer. Personally, he was a wild man. He, there were no boundaries. There were no boundaries to drinking, smoking, and God knows what else. And, and obviously his involvement with women. Uh, you know, at one point he had a romance with, uh, and I didn't, personally wasn't involved in this, but he had a romance with Kim Novak, who was the big star of Columbia Pictures. And as the story goes, and I believe it, Harry Cohn, who was the head of Columbia, who was supposed to be a wild man himself and a, you know, a terror, called one of my associates, who was involved with Sammy, George Wood, and said, get him married now. And that's the night Sammy Davis in Vegas proposed to one of the chorus girls, and they got married because it would have killed Columbia Pictures. It was an era where you know, it would have destroyed Kim Novak, and they forced him to get married to an African-American lady. So, you know, I mean, I mean, Sammy bought me a camera. It was like you know, a very expensive Nikon. It was like giving a toy to a little kid. I didn't know what to do with it. I mean, he was big with gifts. He was... He was uh, I think he was very genuine. I think he cared. But he lived in this tempo in this, uh, uh, that kept going. It never stopped. It could be all night long. So we shared some moments together, but it usually it was around business. Oh, we got dinner. I got a picture upstairs of me having dinner with him. Um, but I didn't get to, I, we were not best buddies. 